que foi Fractures. Introduction. The scaphoid is the most common carpal bone to fracture. Fracture of the scaphoid usually occurs from a fall into the outstretched hand. The patient usually experiences wrist pain and some is swelling, and the patient may not seek medical advice, thinking it is a wrist sprain. The patient may get an x-ray, and the x-ray initially may be negative. Scaphoid fracture could be missed. The blood supply of the scaphoid is very unique. The fracture may have difficulty in healing. In fact, a vascular necrosis of the proximal fragment may occur with fracture scaphoid bone. It is a small bone, but if it is fractured, it can have bad effects. Always look for tenderness at the anatomic snuff box and pain on axial load. Even if the x-ray is negative, you should immobilize the wrist adequately with a thumb spica cast for a short period of time, 10 days to 2 weeks. The blood supply When a fracture of the scaphoid occurs, it can be slow to heal due to the limited circulation of the blood of the bone. The blood supply of the scaphoid is unique and tenuous. The primary blood supply enters the dorsal ridge and it runs retrograde to the proximal scaphoid. The dorsal blood supply comes from the dorsal carpal branch of the radial artery. The dorsal supplies the proximal 80% of the scaphoid via the retrograde blood flow. The volar blood supply comes from the superficial palmar branch of the radial artery. It enters the distal tubercle and supplies the distal 20% of the scaphoid. Scaphoid fractures can lead to non-union and vascular necrosis due to interruption of the blood supply. The more proximal the fracture, the more likely the fracture will develop non-union and AVN. Mechanism of fracture Axial load with hyperextension and radial deviation of the rest. In general, if the fall in the outstretched hand creating a force that leads to hyperextension, ulnar deviation, and intercarbal spination, then the fracture of the scaphoid may be associated with perilunate dislocation. So it will be a trans-scaphoid perilunate dislocation. Fracture types. Waist fracture. It's about 65% and transverse fracture is more stable. It is the most frequent fracture site and has a moderate risk of AVM and non-union. Distal third fracture is about 10% and it is the most common location in children and there's a question about that. Proximal third fracture, there's a high incidence of non-union and vascular necrosis. Proximal pole has a non-union rate of 40 to 50%. Tuberosity fracture is rare. The proximal fifth causes 100% AVN. The proximal third causes 33% AVN. Radiology X-rays AP lateral and scaphoid view 
scaphoid view, 30 degree rest extension, and the 20 degree ulnar deviation. If the x-rays are negative and there is a high clinical suspicion of a scaphoid fracture, then immobilize the fracture and repeat the x-rays in two to three weeks. Bone scan will give you fracture diagnosis in 72 hours. MRI can be used for early diagnosis of the fracture. MRI is very sensitive and will diagnose the fracture in less than 24 hours. MRI also show the AVN and the vascularity of the proximal fragment of the proximal pole. CT scan may be helpful in diagnosing healing of the fracture. To check for the non-union, you get a CT scan along the scaphoid axis. Treatment of scaphoid fractures. A thumb spica cast for a stable, non-displaced fracture, or if the x-ray is negative, but there is a high index of suspicion for a scaphoid fracture. In this situation, you will put the thumb spica cast and you're going to reevaluate the patient in two to three weeks. Then remove the cast and get an x ray. If the patient continues to have pain and the x rays continue to be negative, then get an MRI and reapply the thumb spica cast and follow the patient closely. Why is that? Because the patient has pain. If the patient does not have pain, get rid of the cast. Don't get an MRI. The question is, do you use a short or long arm thumb spica cast? And what is the duration of the thumb spica cast? The period of immobilization and the healing time of the fracture is decided by the location of the fracture. I think the expected time to heal for the fractures in a thumb spica cast in the distal pole scaphoid healing occurs in about 8 weeks, the middle third in the waist about 8 to 12 weeks, and the proximal third between 5 to 6 months. It takes longer time for the proximal third of the scaphoid fracture to heal. Proximal fractures are very slow to heal in a cast. When you see a scaphoid fracture or you suspect it, you need to immobilize it early. Delay immobilization of more than four weeks will increase the rate of non-union. Do you use a cast or percutaneous screw for a non-displaced fracture of the scaphoid? Patient with percutaneous screw, their fracture heal faster and they return to work earlier. There is no difference in range of motion or grip strength at two years follow-up. Non-displaced waist fracture can be treated by a cast immobilization or percutaneous fixation. Fractures with less than one millimeter displacement treated by a thumb spiker cast, the union rate is approximately 90%. Displacement of the fracture more than one millimeter can increase the incidence of non-union significantly. In athlete, you do percutaneous fixation. It's better than prolonged period of cast immobilization with increased risk of delayed union, non-union, AVN with non-surgical treatment. Surgery. It can be open reduction internal fixation or percutaneous screw fixation. The indication for surgery is unstable fracture, fracture proximal third, fracture more than one millimeter displacement, Dizzy deformity, radiolunate more than 15 degrees, humpback deformity more than 15 degrees, a scaphoid fracture associated with perilunate dislocation, comminuted fractures, unstable vertical or oblique 
fractures. Proximal fracture, you will do reduction and compression screw fixation through dorsal approach. It will help proper reduction of the fracture. The proximal fractures, even with a 1 mm gap, will need surgery. There is a high rate of non-union of these fractures. You need prolonged immobilization by non-operative treatment. There is poor blood supply of the proximal pole. If it is a waist fracture, you can go volar or dorsal. The compression screw inserted in the central scaphoid is biomechanically stable, so the screw placement would be in the central axis of the distal and proximal fragments. Proper screw seating below the subchondral bone is confirmed by direct visualization. The approach, dorsal or volar? The volar approach for waist and distal third fractures and also for humpback flexion deformity of the scaphoid. What is the humpback deformity? The humpback deformity looks like this. Correction of the humpback deformity is better achieved through volar approach. You go in the interval between the flexor carpi radialis and the radial artery. You can see the flexion deformity. This is the dorsal approach for proximal fractures. Why do you do dorsal approach for proximal third fractures? For direct visualization of the fracture, it will help reduction, and if bone grafting is needed, it can be done through the same incision if necessary. Complications of a scaphoid fracture AVN of the proximal pole, non union, malunion, arthritis, a snack. Scaphoid non union, advanced collapse. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.